projectile motion is just a special kind of two-dimensional motion in which an object is given an initial force and allowed to fly through the air unrestricted from any other force besides the, Earth, besides the Earth's gravity. So for example, um, a golf ball that's hit with a golf club is in projectile motion because it's, it's given an initial force, which is from the golf club, and allowed to fly through the air unrestricted from any other force besides the gravity of Earth. Now a bullet is also in projectile motion. Um, when let's 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 look at that. When a bullet is fired from a gun, it's given an initial force from the explosion of the gun, and then allowed to fly through the air unrestricted from any other forces besides the gravity of the Earth pulling it downward. An example of an object that's not in projectile motion would be an airplane, because when it's flying through the air, it has all kinds of forces acting on it. It's got Earth's gravity. It's got its wings providing lift for it and it even has its engine providing a thrust. So there's all kind of force, extra forces acting on the plane besides Earth's gravity once it's in the air. So a plane is not in projectile motion. A golf ball and a bullet are both in projectile motion because the only force acting on it after that initial force is Earth's gravity. So this is going to sound very familiar to you uh, because when we looked at free fall ob um, objects, those were given an initial force, whether it be my hand, throwing a ball straight up in the air, or me dropping a ball um, from the top of a building. Those were initial forces, and then after that, only Earth's gravity was pulling the object down. And so free-falling objects were actually in projectile motion, except they were only in one dimension, so they were in the up and down direction. Here, our objects are going to be not only going up and down, but they're also going to be going side to side. And um, it turns out that these objects are still going to have constant acceleration, both in the y direction and in the x direction. And so we can apply the same equations of motion for constant acceleration that we saw in our one dimensional problems. And so on the board here, I have two of those four equations that we saw before. And these are the two equations that we'll be focusing on mostly in projectile motion. And so for example, for this equation, if I wanted to find the x position of the object as it traveled from left to right in projectile motion, I could plug it, uh, values into this equation and find the x position as it traveled. If I wanted to find the velocity in the x direction of this object, I could use this equation. Um, so as the object traveled from left to right, I could find its velocity in the x direction. Now, I can apply these same equations uh, to the y direction. And as I applied these for the x direction, I was completely ignoring the fact that the object was traveling up and down. I was just focusing on the fact that it was traveling from left to right. Now, uh, if I rewrite these um, for the y direction, it would look exactly the same, except I would place all the x's with y's. And so for the y direction, this equation would look like this. So if I want to know the y position of the object as it traveled through space, um, I could use this equation. I would just have to plug in these variables. And so when I'm doing this, I'm completely, completely ignoring the fact that the object is going from left to right. I'm just solely focusing on the fact that it's going up and it's going down. And I'm going to apply this equation of constant acceleration in the y direction uh, to that object. And I could do the same thing with this equation, um, replacing all the x's with y's. Uh, the velocity in the y direction would equal this. So if I wanted to find the velocity in the y direction of this projectile object, um, I could just plug in my values for this equation. And I'm, as I'm doing this again, I'm ignoring the fact that the object has a velocity in the x direction. I'm solely concentrating on the fact that it has velocity in the up and down direction. And so first what we're going to do is focus on these different variables and they're gonna, these variables are going to look a little bit different because we're focusing on the fact that this is a specific type of constant acceleration problem, namely projectile motion. So our first goal is going to look at these variables a little bit closer and define what they actually equal in projectile motion.